Howdy friends. So I'm out here and it is October 2nd of 21. It is a beautiful day, which is always a blessing out here in Washington at this time of year. So taking advantage of it. Most of the leaves are still green, but they are definitely fading and coming down. So it's that time of year. Rains have come and I will look at this as an experiment. I do have this Advantech subfloor, which I've been told is far superior to standard OSB. And so we're gonna put it to the test here. Uh, since I don't have a roof, I'm just gonna leave these down and see if they are as durable as I've been told. There is slight flaking on a couple pieces, but I don't know if that is because of the water or just because of what it is. Uh, but we'll find out if it's as good as they say. So other than that, uh, what I'm going to be doing today is framing up some walls. I'm going to start here and go back around and this way. And originally I was just going to take the, you know, the rotten studs out one at a time, ones that have rot at the bottom, and replace them with uh, new ones which I did in the opposite end of the house so far. But uh, looking at them, there's really only like four or five that are salvageable. And then the capper was that the top plate, you know, looks good from the bottom, but on the top side, this side of the house isn't too bad, but there's a few soft spots. Um, I think that front one is pretty good, but this far side is just, most of it's all rotten so being that all the studs are bad for the most part top plates aren't that good I'm just gonna start fresh and frame up the full wall and then take each a section out at a time and replace it um, and then I'm going to replace the one by four on the bottom uh, with the two by four just to give it a little bit of extra height you know, thinking now that I'm just basically replacing all the walls, I probably should have just added an inch or two to the wall studs. But, you know, you plan one way and then things take a turn and you end up doing something different. Plus, I can't go really too high um, because the inspector will say, hey, your walls are way different. And you have to get some engineering uh, stamps and, you know, that costs a lot of money. So we're just going to try to keep it uh on under the radar as much as I can you know my county inspectors working with me pretty well he's like basically if you can't tell the difference from stock he's not gonna you know give me too much trouble about it so anyway that's that I wish I lived in a state that didn't require any permits for mobile home remodel and yes a remodel I do have to note that I had a viewer whose husband rightly pointed out that like hey this is no longer remodel this is a rebuild yeah correct um i would say it is a rebuild so basically the only thing that's staying in place is going to be the plumbing that's going out exhaust tubes that kind of thing um surprisingly this had copper piping so i'm going to keep that in here but a lot of it you know it's pretty corroded so i probably will um re-solder all the joints anyway maybe put new ones in so yeah basically just the plumbing is going to be the same and then i'll technically keep the electrical i probably will update the box at some point it looks like it was this house is an 83 and it looks like the box was um replaced in 95 ish so that's good it's a 200 amp panel so that's nice too but i will probably update that and obviously when i put the roof on i'm gonna put you know more outlets or um, lights on the ceiling so we'll see about getting permits for that too technically i'm sure i need a permit to replace all the outlets that have been taken out but you know i'm just going with stock design and if the inspector can't tell then we won't tell him all right anyway that's just a little update on what we've got going on and so we'll get to work So I think I'm building, so basically I'm going to break up the wall sections for that uh, front third of the house into four sections. Um, 
the outer ones closer to the front shear wall to longer ones and then as it gets closer to the bump out in front door those sections are pretty small so i think this one right here that i'm building goes on the front door side and touches the front shear wall and when i built this i was just worried about the measurements of how wide or long it was going to be and whatnot that i forgot to cut out the section for the window in that part of the wall but it's fine um it's already up there i'll cut out you know where i need to put the opening for the window uh, at some other point and actually it works out good because i think the stud in the middle of where that window is supposed to be i think i cut it too short because it's sitting over there and it's like one of those studs is sitting an inch from the uh, bottom plate uh, the sill plate for the wall so yeah worked out for the good i suppose but anyway so right there i'm just kind of marking out that little runner there so that i can hopefully get the wall fairly square and just putting one screw in each section just to get it to hold still while i move it and keep it semi-square so that's just what i've been doing and you've seen it for the other you know the wall that right behind me there and the others that i've put up so far so kept doing it This section, since I still have that first wall set up in that front room, this is the, the middle bedroom that's only like 10 by 10 or so or 10 by 8 or something along those lines. Uh, it's basically just going to stand straight up and, and replace a section that's right there uh, next to the front door. So it was a smaller one, so I was able to build it in there. And I did move the other wall out of the way so I could build this one. And you can see I have a uh, double uh, frame or double two by fours in the front of the picture there. And so that's going to meet the bump out section. So that's where that wall is going to be. So this will be three out of four. I'm not doing the front shear wall yet. I'll be doing it later. All right, so on this end I did it correctly where the bigger notches are right here but you need to check your work sometimes because over here the big notches are up here not down here so these two by fours are technically upside down so I'm glad I caught it now but we'll pound those out switch them around nail them back in good times and now that we got those turned around, I can uh, put the window in here. So good thing I didn't forget to uh, make that section for this one. I think this spans a couple 2x4s, uh, 16 on center width. So it would have been a little bit more difficult to do after the fact. So glad I remembered that. Although I do have to do some repairs, if you can see. So where I'm nailing in the what do you call it the oh don't say what do you call it? i've been so good about not saying that but if you can see there where the stud meets the floor there's a little gap and i didn't notice that so when i hammered in that uh, header um, it's sitting down a little ways from the studs so and when i put it up um, it would definitely make my drywall look not so great bowing inward so later on i'll just uh, take a sawzall to the nails Cut them out, place it correctly, and, and put it in place where it should be. So, so I showed you before how I made these little notches on the last video I think I posted, but here's another look for people that didn't watch that video. Just creating the depth on the saw and uh, I went and got my chisel and banged out the little notches and, and there we go. As per usual, just uh, putting in that little runner piece to keep the wall square for when I move it and set it into place.
And so that was, this is the, I think the fourth section of the wall. Uh, I didn't get it finished before I left for the day and I don't think I recorded uh, finishing it up the next time I came to work out there. So, yep, next video I will show you putting them up.